Good morning, folks. This is Soho Lasco C3 Corona Graph, blocking the sun's glare with the central opaque disk to see what looks like clouds in space. That's the center of the galaxy, as the solstice happens to also be the galactic alignment with Earth and Sun. By the way, we are to believe that is 100% coincidence. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we'll begin a cosmos of news with our star and find not a lot of activity. Dark coronal holes are the primary features turning through. The active region, bright area now departing towards the western limb on the north, appears to have lost some umbral field power as brightness begins to dim in 171 angstroms. While the solar wind is very calm at the moment, these coronal holes have been sending intensified streams towards Earth, will likely cause minor auroral displays when that arrives next week. Let's go next to earthquakes. 5.5 isn't setting off any global alerts, but it's unusual for this region, which is already a concern given the dome collapse and global seismic wave from last month, the opening of the Suswa Rift just north in Kenya, and what appears to be the destabilization of the entire zone. Hail is up next, sort of. So while Aussies might feel the urge to laugh at what Tampa Bay saw this week, please know that at least you guys didn't have a freaking tsunami. Forecasters actually talked about this possibility due to the power and pressure differential on either side of the convergence line that dropped that hail in Tampa. The ocean was surging to the south, rammed the coastline, flooding numerous cottages and seafront properties before slowly leaking back out. Great shots of 2003 SD 220 here. Large asteroid images by a number of ground-based telescopes as they attempt to hone their multi-observation system for tracking near-Earth objects. Bit of a sad double story here. Last week, we heard that a third of the spectacled flying fox population in Carnes was lost due to a heat wave, and it comes as scientists nearby are just completing a study on how the animals are not adapting to wild weather as well as many scientists thought they would. Sort of a bad news, worse news situation. Feel free to lift your spirits back up with an electrofish. Same group that published the electrosight in fish study weeks back now has even more insight into seeing the world electrically. Up next, these are the first legit candidates for what they call intermediate mass black holes. In that paradigm, they are both elusive and tough to understand from a perspective of time in the cosmos, but in reality, these are definitely helping to characterize the size, age, and power of an active galactic nucleus. This is where electric and plasma universe fans need to remember it's not like there's nothing at these galactic centers. Something massive and powerful is spewing out the material for future stars and planets against the attraction of itself. Princeton Plasma Lab at it again, this time claiming that certain plasma turbulence action in the solar corona is responsible for turning eddies into plasma whirlpools. These create immense and unexpected electric sheets and currents. The power was so unexpected that they believe this electric discovery must be a big piece of the puzzle of the hot corona. Folks, last night we put out part two in our Earth Cycles run. Last week it was the one book the CIA classified on the disaster. Last night, it was more about the players, concepts, and resources for you to dig deeper. Some commenters liked it more than the episode one. Website members, your podcast is coming up in just a few hours, and we're discussing the Earth cycle catastrophe there as well. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.